What's up you guys, Nathan Larson here with another video for those of you who make music at home, whether you are an artist, a songwriter, producer, if you write and record your own music at home, this is the channel for you. So if that sounds like you, you should uh, click the subscribe button and uh, you know, hit the bell for notifications and all that jazz. And if you like the video, you should hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. That's what my manager, not manager, tells me to say because I don't have a manager. And if you wanna connect with me deeper than we can in the comment section, then follow me on over at Instagram, send me a DM, say, hey, what's up? Whether you just wanna say, hey, or if you're you know looking for a producer. So here's the deal, you guys have spoken. I asked you earlier this week what video you wanted to see. You guys voted on Logic Pro Shortcuts. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, you need to subscribe and then follow my community posts. I'm gonna start you know, talking with you guys more, asking you what videos you wanna see, and then I'm gonna be making those videos. It's pretty sweet, right? So I'm gonna be showing you 28 shortcuts in Logic Pro to speed up your workflow. Why 28? I don't know, because I felt like it. So I went through this very fast. So if you need to pause and take notes or whatever you gotta do, put me on half speed, do it. Because we're gonna just plow through this stuff super quick. Let's jump into Logic, let's do it. All right, so here we are in Logic. Let's see how fast we can do this. So number one is zooming in and out two different ways. So you're gonna get two in one for this one. If you are still zooming in and out, over here this way, what are you doing guys, come on. So instead what you're gonna do is, the first option is to do command and then arrow keys side to side to zoom in this way or back, left, right. Now to make it wider vertically, then you go up and down arrows. Now you're gonna see how each time I hit, it's gonna kinda do it a little bit at a time. So that's why maybe you don't wanna do it that, that way. Instead you can do it faster by doing option and then use your mouse or uh, trackpad and then do up and down this way. So you can do it way faster. Left and right, left and right. Boom, there you guys go. That's number one. Number two is to name regions by track. So right now you can see this region name here is weird because I just dropped in a sound that I downloaded. So what I'm gonna do is clock, ticking, and then if you do shift option N, it will name it. For me, I'm really particular. I want everything to be named properly. I hate it when you see like track 11, and then I wanna see what the name is on the regions. Number three is to then take care of color. So for me, when I have my bases, I do not like my bases being green. I'm I'm color coordinated type of a person. So my bases are always like a purple or a deep purple, deep blue type color. So you can do option C to open your colors and then you can go in here and now select colors, okay? Now, let's go ahead and say that this was something that I actually wanted to be green, the color of this track. You can then do shift option C and that will change the region to the color of the tracks. So I could go in here and you know assign track color to this region like that that does not, or not the region track, excuse me, but that did not change the color of the region. So shift option C, boom. That's another two for one. Number four is super simple. If you are opening the editor window by going up here and clicking up here to open the editor window, that's also such, such a waste of time. E, just hit E. You tr just click in here, hit E, that'll open up your editor window, whether that is MIDI or audio. E. Number five is the shortcut to open the mixer window, and that is X. If you click X, just like that, boom, you've got your mixer window open. Number six is to start the loop cycle, and that is by clicking C. So instead of going up in here, in here and turning your cycle on, you just hit C. And then of course you can move that all around, C, boom. So number seven is to open the tools with the cursor, instead of going up here and clicking different tools, you can instead, if you have your cursor down here and you're really lazy, you can just hit T and that will open up all of your tool options. The next tip, tip number eight, is to do the same thing, hit T, and then you have all of these options down here. You can now use your keyboard to have other key commands to go to different tools. So you could literally go T to open it up, I, and that's gonna open up your scissors. If you wanna go back to the uh, cursor tool, T, T pointer tool. Number nine, shortcut number nine is to open up your automation. Click A and that opens up automation. Very simple. So again, rather than going up here and clicking it, just A. You can actually do this within the editor window as well. So say if MIDI open here, you can click A and open up your automation down here as well and have all the different parameters you can control as well. Let's go ahead and talk about creating a new track. If you want to create a new track, option, command, N. 
and that will create a new track. And of course, you can then select what kind of track it is that you want to create. So rather than going up here and creating a new track, you can just Option, Command, N. If you want to open up a specific type of track, Audio Track would be Option, Command, A. a. Boom, got that. The next one is Option, Command, S. That will open up MIDI. There you go. Those are three more. The next one is turning the click on and off. So you can do K and that will turn your click on and off. So this would be on while you play, not just when you record. So you would hear this. And you could turn it off using K. There we go. The next one is to activate your second tool. So if you have your advanced tools, uh, advanced options open, you can open up your second tool here and do command and that will open up that option. So there you go, I've got my scissor tool as the second one. So if you hit command, it'll open that up and you can start chopping stuff up. The next one is opening up your system preferences very quickly and that is command comma. And uh, that's really handy to have if you need to change anything. The next one is if you want to nudge things over. So let's just theoretically say that this region here was like that, which is not correct. You can do option and then arrow key left and right to move that over. That nudges that. That can work with um, not just regions, but that also can work with MIDI as well works with audio too, audio regions. Sweet, the next one is if you want to repeat a region, that is Command R. This one's pretty handy, so rather than uh, just like duplicating things, you can do Command R, you can just keep doing it for however long you want, and you will be able to duplicate. Oop, not, that's not what I want to do, Command R. There we go, Julio. And of course you can have multiple things selected and it will create duplication. So I mean you could literally go in here and we could do that for this whole section. Of course, then we'll need to move it so it's in time. Okay, I don't even know what number we're on, but the next one is if you want to hide a track. Um, let's say, for example, this uh, soft piano here. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll actually have two separate piano sounds. One of them is really, really soft, and one of them will be a little more, more bright like this. But let's say that I decide, you know what, I don't wanna use a soft piano. I'm actually gonna turn it off, but maybe I don't wanna delete it. I wanna have it there just in case I decide to change my mind. You can do Control H to hide that track. And then if you wanna reopen everything, the next one is just click H. So you can see how much stuff I actually have hidden here. Um, this is for a, a new project for a client. And so I have, this was all just the scratch stuff. And once I've actually started producing it, I hide it, I do not delete it. I wanna keep it just in case I need to go back. The next one is to join regions. So you can see here, I have all of these individual little pieces of audio. These are all just kicks, you can hear. But what I, what I wanna do is actually join all of that. So instead of having all the individual pieces, I've got all of it. So you're gonna hit J and then enter or create. And there we go, we've got that entire thing. Now, uh, if I wanna duplicate this, for the next chorus, I can just do that easily instead of grabbing all of that. All right, let's go on to the next one. The next one, let's go ahead and open up our MIDI piano roll. The next one is if you have a note selected and you do option and then arrow key up or down, it will move it a half step or a semitone uh, for those of you guys in England. There you go, that's the next one. The next one is similar, but rather than doing a, a half step, instead you can do shift option up, we'll take it up an octave or down an octave. This is super handy. So you could grab all sorts of different things and move them. So the next one is actually to do select all, which is command A, that will select everything, and then you could do something like that by moving that whole thing around. All right, this next one is called force legato. So you can notice how these notes here are not going all the way to this note here. What you can do is shift and then backslash or forward slash, it's the one that's above the enter key, that one, and then enter, and that will push it all the way up to it. That is force legato. All right, this next one is one that I only recently learned and is pretty awesome. It's called strip silence. So we've got this vocal here. This is just a scratch vocal that I was sent and um, there's several moments where there's silence and you can listen to this. 
you can obviously hear some stuff going on there. So I'm gonna select what I wanna select here and then do Control X. And as you can see, it basically is going in and analyzing this whole thing. And then you can determine what your threshold's gonna be. You can change, so like actually you can see here where it's kind of making some mistakes. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in here. No, nope, you can't actually zoom in. But I can already tell that there's some mistakes here where it shouldn't be removing that. So what I'm gonna do is decrease this threshold until it removes those problems, which that looks that looks good. And I'm gonna do okay, and then you can see still has a little bit that I need to kind of fix. But as you can see, it did a pretty darn good job. Yep, that's perfect. That's perfect. And then you can see some stuff that I have to clean up here still. But that is way faster than me going in and uh, having to do that all by hand, which is awesome. That's what I normally would have done. All right, this other one here is using the automation curve without having to use the automation curve tool. This is a really cool one. Um, so say for example, like you're using strings and uh, let's say the particular instrument that you're using does not have a volume control within the actual library. Um, most of them do, but I know like back when I was first getting into production, some of the string samples I was using, they did not have an expression control, so you actually had to do it with with volume. And so the way you would do that is create a point, let's say we want this to be a swell. So what you're gonna do is shift control, and you can see that you've got the little, uh, under my cursor there, you have the way, the, um, you know what I mean. <laughs> What's it called? Automation curve tool, there you go. Okay, so you're gonna do shift control and you'll see the automation curve tool pop up under my cursor and then you can go ahead and start messing around with it that way and do the curve. All right, this next one is a way to basically copy in anything and everything you want. So if you do option, click on something and hold down option and hold down the click, it will allow you to just like create copies of stuff, which is really cool. This works in virtually anything. Actually, this is kind of just like an Apple thing in general. So what's cool is if we open up our, our uh, mixing window here, you could do the same thing for plugins. So let's say that I wanna add a plugin to a different thing. You can just literally option, click, drag. I don't actually want to do that though. The next one is a way to actually turn off multiple plugins very quickly. So like right here, I've got this vocal chain. So rather than going in and being like, I'm just gonna turn everything off here, all this stuff, Instead, you can do option and then click and drag. And look at that, you can just turn everything off. It's just awesome, super fast. Boom, love it. All right, the next one is to learn automation. So you can learn automation by going up here and you know, of course going to control surfaces, learn assignment for show hide or whatever. But instead what you can do is very, very simple. So let's say we want to do some sort of like a filter here. So let's say we wanna do a low pass filter. So I can go ahead and move that parameter that you want, and you're gonna do Command L. And then what I'm gonna do is now it's in learn mode, I'm going to then move one of the parameters on my MIDI controller. Ready for this? Let's see, I'm gonna use this one. There we go. So all I did was move it and then boom, it's learned. So then now every time I use this, on my controller, you'll see, boop, boop. There we go, very, very simple. So literally all you do is again, one more time, you move whatever parameter it is, you do Command L, it's gonna make it learn, and then do some parameter on, or some control on your controller. And then now, we've got that one, which is not one I would actually wanna do. So I can always just reassign that. There you go. All right, and the very last one is a way to actually copy your channel settings and then paste it. So say I've got this uh, channel setting right here with all the stuff. Let's say that I wanted to create another audio track with the exact same settings. Now, first off, you could just do Command D, which would duplicate that. Boom, I guess that was an extra one for you. But let's just say we had an entire new audio uh, track here, and I just wanted to take the settings from this one and just place it on here. What you would do is you would go to this track, do Option Command C, that's gonna copy it, go down here and then do Option Command V, and then it will literally copy those exact same settings over there. So hey, if you haven't already done so, you need to make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications. I'm gonna be uploading at least once a week, and hey, maybe down the road I'll, you know, do more than one video a week. Could happen.